Hey everybody, last time we discussed how we can think about an ellipse as a stretched circle, and today we're going to discuss a new way of looking at ellipse that involve focal points, similar to the focal point in a parabola. So we're going to begin by discussing ellipse terminology. A horizontal ellipse is an ellipse where the horizontal dimension is bigger, and the vertical ellipse is one where the vertical dimension is bigger. Last time we saw that the formula for an ellipse is x minus h squared over a squared plus y minus k squared over b squared is equal to 1. And a is the amount of the horizontal stretch and b is the amount of the vertical stretch from that perspective. So we're going to define a as half the length of the horizontal axis and, half the, and b as half the length of the vertical axis. Now the terms major and minor axis are a little bit different. Major refers to whichever one is the longer one and minor refers to whichever one is the shorter one. So in a horizontal ellipse, it's the horizontal axis that's major. And so A refers to half of the um, horizontal axis, sorry, the major axis in that case. And a vertical ellipse, B refers to half of the length of the major axis in that case. Now that's for this course. In other courses, they might define it differently. So for example, in other courses, A might mean half the length of the major axis, and B might mean half the length of the minor axis. But in this course, because we started with the perspective of a stretched circle, A will always be half the length of the horizontal axis, and B will always be half the length of the vertical axis. As long as we're consistent, there won't be any problems with this. That's just how it works. So our new perspective is that an ellipse is a set of points whose combined distances from two focal points is constant. That is when d1 plus d2 is equal to d. What does that mean? Look at the picture. Look at d1 and d2. Those are the distances from a point on the ellipse to the two uh, foci or focal points. The combined distances will always be the same. And as we see, as we go around the circle, sometimes the, the red distance will be bigger, uh, d1. Sometimes the blue distance, d2, will be bigger. But they will always add up to be the same thing. and that will be equal to d. And my question for you is, what is d in terms of a and or b? Okay, so think about that and uh, try it out. In order to find out what d is equal to, it's a good idea to first um, rotate this until this point. And then it becomes very easy to note certain markings. This blue line is d2. It is the distance from the focus to the point. And because of symmetry, that is also going to be d2. And then the rest of it, because it's the, the distance from the point to the other focus, is going to be d1. So d1 plus d2 make up the entirety of the horizontal axis, or the major axis in this case. And so the horizontal axis is 2a, because a is the half the distance of the horizontal axis we have the equation d1 plus d2 is equal to 2a, or a plus a. And if the ellipse is horizontal, d is going to be equal to 2a. However, if it's vertical, then the, op the logic is going to be kind of reversed, because in order to get a vertical ellipse, you need to have a, uh, the, the focal points be on the vertical axis. And so what you need to, to realize is that this is 2b in this case. So the combined distances uh, to the point is going to be equal to 2b. And so d in this case is going to be equal to 2b, not 2a. So it's going to be either 2a or 2b, depending on the orientation of the ellipse. We let c denote the distance from the center to a focus. So right now we have, we have an alphabet soup, a, b, c, and d. c is the distance from the center to the focus. And we have some tasks based on this idea, uh, a. What are the coordinates of the focal point, the focal points of this ellipse? B. Uh, earlier we learned this definition of an ellipse. It's a set of points whose combined distances from two focal points is constant. D1 plus D2 is equal to D. Using this definition and the distance formula and the points that you've uh, discovered, write this as an equation in terms of X, Y, and C. You also probably will have D in there as well. And the, the real challenge, and this is a challenge that you should only attempt if you feel your algebra is very strong, but I would encourage you to view the answer no matter what. Through algebraic manipulation, show that this form can be rewritten as x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared is equal to 1. So the check. Um, 
the coordinates of the foci, the foci or the focal points, depending on your pronunciation, are C0 and negative C0 as on the picture above. Now, in order for this to uh, represent the distances, we use the distance formula and the, the red distance over there is going to be X, Y and negative C0 and you plug it in the distance formula and the, the blue distance is gonna be X, Y and C0 and you plug that into the distance formula and combined they equal D. And because D is equal to 2A for a horizontal ellipse, we can make that substitution as well. And then we can do a whole lot of other steps to get it into the form x squared over a squared plus y squared is equal to b squared is equal to 1. But we're not going to do that now. That'll be in Appendix 1. Task 3. We have this alphabet soup of a, b, c, and c. Can you find a relationship between a, b, and c in this horizontal ellipse based on the picture below? Try it out. Okay, so what do we know? We know that that line is combined distances is going to be 2a. And because of the unique symmetry of this case, each of them is going to be a, each half. So this side over here, this line, this distance from the uh, focus to the point is going to be a. And we know the other ones. This one's c because that's the focal point, distance from the focus to the center. And this is going to be b because it's half of the vertical axis. And this is a right triangle. So it's going to follow the Pythagorean theorem and a squared is going to be b equal to b squared plus c squared as a result because this is a horizontal ellipse. Now for a vertical ellipse, the formula will be slightly different because everything's vertical now. d is going to be equal to 2b, so therefore this side is b instead of a. This side is going to be a because it's half of the horizontal axis, and this is c because it is the distance from the center to the focus. And so in this case, the relationship will be b squared is equal to a squared plus c squared. So we learned a whole bunch of letters and ways of thinking about ellipses. So let's just review them. And after this will be the appendix where we show how we get from the uh, focal point definition to the earlier formula that we know. So A is distance of half the horizontal axis, B is the distance of half the vertical axis, C is the distance from the center to the focus, and D is the combined distance uh, from the focal points to any given point on the ellipse. The combined distance formulas are the following. D is equal to 2A for a horizontal ellipse, and D is equal to 2B for a vertical ellipse. And A, B, and C are governed by Pythagorean-like relationships. A squared is equal to B squared plus C squared if A is the biggest, in other words, if it's a horizontal ellipse. And B squared is equal to A squared plus C squared if B is the biggest, that is, if it's a vertical ellipse. All right, so upcoming is the appendix where we show how we get from the focal point definition to the uh, formula of an ellipse. So this is the result of the previous uh, task that we did. And the question is what to, where to go from here. We can first square both sides. Uh, again, this is going to be a pretty hairy algebraic thing. Uh, hopefully you can get something out of just watching the solution, but this is pretty difficult. If you're able to do it, uh, um, then that's pretty impressive. So we squared both sides. You have double the, the product of the outer terms because that's how FOIL or distribution or whatever um, way you want to think of how we multiply a binomial by itself. Then we can uh, expand and also combine the two square roots into one square root, and as well as uh, expand within each of those square roots as well. And the goal of why we're doing this is because we want to get rid of the square roots. So square roots are not in the final formula. We want to get rid of them entirely. And the next thing we can do is combine everything in the green box together and subtract it from both sides, and then square it again with the intention of um, getting rid of all the square roots. So we're squaring the two to get the four, we're squaring that square root, the square root gets eliminated, and the entire right-hand side is going to be squared. All right, so what next? We can factor out a two on the right-hand side uh, with the goal of having things become slightly simpler, and we can apply the exponent of the squared on the right-hand side, squaring the two and squaring the larger factor. And then we can divide both sides by four. And at this point, it's, it's still kind of terrifying. So what I did was the box method in order to multiply these factors by each other. Now, you could do this without the box method if you're, if you're careful enough, but I know I would make a mistake. And I also like the symmetries and the patterns that result from using the box method to multiply things by each other. So that was my chosen strategy in this case. And what to do from here? Well, we have a, a kind of an equation uh, on both sides, uh, we use the box method, and we can just use the normal rules to cancel things out. So for instance, if there's the same thing added on both sides, 
we could subtract it from both sides to get rid of it. And if there is something on one side that cancels, we can get rid of that too. And we can cancel here, and then we can cancel some more things on both sides. And all that's left is left-hand side equals right-hand side once we add everything together. What next? Well, we can divide by four. We can gather the x squared and the y squared and the constant terms so that they're one after the other, just like in the final ellipse formula. We can factor things out and we can divide by the right-hand side. And then we would get this formula, which is incredibly similar to the um, ellipse formula, except the ellipse formula has a b squared there. Well, firstly, we know that there's a b squared there because it's a stretched ellipse. And therefore, this is a proof that a squared minus c squared is equal to b squared because one is in the exact same spot as the other, all else becoming the same, else all else being the same. So a squared minus c squared equals b squared because we've shown that everything else is the same except for that individual point. But also we proved earlier today that a squared is equal to b squared plus c squared in a horizontal ellipse. And therefore, by algebraic manipulation, a squared minus c squared is equal to b squared. So we proved that separately. So it makes sense that b squared would be in that remaining spot. And we finally, after all that algebra, get the ellipse formula. So uh, that's it for today. Um, we have a few more things to discuss about ellipses, but we've seen the major theoretical points. Um, we're going to have a few more perspectives on it by the time we're done. Until then, have a great day.